Our world is traveling toward its date with destiny. Signs indicate the last days are drawing near. No one knows the exact date or time, but today's headlines provide evidence that the Earth's time is short. Join us for the next half hour to discover what the Bible teaches us about the future. Welcome to Prophecy Watch. Maranatha, our Lord is coming. I am Dr. Charles L. Pack of Thy Kingdom Come Ministries, and this is Prophecy Watch, reaching all of North America by satellite. With me today is my friend and co-host, Mr. Philip Goodman. Dr. Pack, I'm glad to be here today, and uh, friends, we're glad to have you with us today on Prophecy Watch. You know, today, more than ever, we have many preachers spinning yarns out of their own imaginations and calling it Bible teaching, but the Holy Spirit calls it apostasy. It is a sure sign that the last days are upon us. You won't want to miss this. Stay with us. Friends, apostasy is within the church like it's never been before in all of history. It is a sure sign that the end days are upon us, and that's according to the Bible. Now, how do we know apostasy when it happens? We know it simply by what one preacher says or one teacher teaches and what the Word of God says, and when they conflict, then we have a situation of apostasy. That is a departure from the faith within the church. Now, one of the great movements of apostasy that we have today, Dr. Pack, is right here in the city of Tulsa. And I have, uh, I'm, I'm not going to accuse anybody. I'm simply going to read from their own words. Amen. And I want to read here from what Dr., or excuse me, Bishop, he calls himself Bishop Carlton Pearson, has to say about salvation. This is what he says, all right. He calls it the gospel of inclusion. He says, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and His resurrection paid the price for all of humanity to have eternal life in heaven without any requirement to repent of sins and receive salvation. He says, belief in Jesus Christ is not necessary to obtain salvation. And he goes on and on, and essentially what he is saying, he calls it the gospel of inclusion, Dr. Pack. Mm -hmm. And essentially what he is saying, now here, here is a globe, this is the world. He is saying that the whole world is already saved. There is no necessity, there is no requirement to repent of your sins or to accept Jesus Christ. He says they just don't know about it yet. Now, they don't know. <laughs> They're all going to heaven regardless of what happens. But the Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It and says wanna... the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Absolutely. It certainly does. And that gives us an indication that not everyone's going to be saved. That's right. <laughs> well, there's many other indications, friends. So I want you to turn with me in your Bible to one of the most familiar verses in all of the Bible. And let's look at it. And as we're doing that, keep in mind the whole world, because that's what we're talking about in this passage. You guessed it, John 3.16. It says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that means He loved all of the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever, now that's, that's anybody in the world who does something, whoever believes in Him, should not perish, but have eternal life. So we have before us the question as to whether or not everybody is going to believe in Christ. Already there's a requirement that you must believe in Christ or you're going to perish. That passage right there says it. Look at John, uh, look at verse 18 in John chapter 3. It says, He who believes in Him is not judged, but he who does not believe has been judged already. In other words, there is no universal salvation. You must receive Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, one final passage here, Dr. Pack, I want to read just in this same chapter. John chapter uh, 3, let's go to verse 36. Again, the question, is everybody who is born already elected into salvation, are they already going to be universally saved? Uh, not according to the Bible. Verse 36, he who believes in the Son has eternal life. That's one group of people. Let's say they all live right here on this side of the globe. The other group. But he who does not obey, that is, obey the gospel of the Son, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And of course, Dr. Pack, the Bible is riddled with passages telling Just us like that, that some people are going to be saved, some are not. Yes. And Phil, not only are we seeing uh, this departure from the faith 
among preachers and priests and so forth, people who profess to be Christians, but we're seeing it among the musicians in the world today, the so-called Christian musicians. I have the latest magazine here from Christian Retailing. This goes to all the Christian retailers all around the world. And Phil, I was amazed in just one issue here. We have three women who have who profess to be Christians, mm -hmm. and now they are going into what they call the mainstream. Two of them are going into the mainstream musically, and one is going as a starlet in a film that's called a sex farce. That means the mainstream of the world. Mainstream it? of the mm -hmm. world. I want to read on the front page here of this first one. It says, a top-selling album has been pulled from the CBA stores by the band's label after profanity-laden after a profanity-laden interview in which group members distance themselves from the Christian market. And there's a whole page about it here, but I'm not going to read the whole page. But then coming over to the next page, here's where a woman uh, who was leaving now just Christian singing, and she is going to make a movie. And they describe this in the magazine as a silly, frantic sex farce. And so this is what you have. And you go on over, and you find another one over here who is uh, departing from the faith. Uh, she is... Uh, uh, she says she's going to try to going to try to stay strong in her faith, but she's going to honor God while she's crossing over into the mainstream market. Now, Phil, the mainstream market for music today is rotten to the core, and this is what's going on as far as apostasy in the music world today. It certainly is, and we see the world leaking into uh, Christian music in a big way, oh, where people my. are mimicking the words of Christ, but actually they're parading the world on stage. Amen. That's right. Well, you know, Doctor Pack, apostasy is. Uh, predicted to occur in the last days. And I want, uh, friends, I want you to turn with me to Jude, the book of Jude, last book in the Bible next to Revelation. Revelation is the last book, but go to Jude with us and go to verse 4. Jude only has one chapter. Verse 4, it says, For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Again, a big hallmark of apostasy in the end days is that people will deny the person of Jesus Christ and they will deny the gospel of grace. And then it goes on in uh, chapter in verse 17, it says, But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, remember what the Bible says. This is where the words of Jesus Christ are. Verse 18, that they were saying to you, in the last times there shall be mockers following after their own ungodly lust. So, doc, uh, lust after their own ungodly lust. So, Dr. Pack, that's a hallmark of apostasy. That's what, that's what it is. And also in 2 Timothy, I'd like to read this in verse uh, 5 of chapter 3. It says this, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power from it, from such turn away. Now, that's what people mm -hmm. should do, turn away from that. For this sort are they who creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with various lusts. And this is where we are today. People are being led away into some of these false apostate churches where these uh, leaders are apostates. Stay with us. You know, friends, the Bible has much to say about false prophets in the end days who will lead this great and final apostasy of the church age that we're in right now. That is, people within the church, and especially teachers and preachers and priests and leaders, departing from the faith. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, as an example, it tells us, uh, and I'm just going to quote this uh, verbatim, I mean, uh, out, out of uh, memory here, it says that there will be false prophets who will parade themselves as sheep in sheep's clothing. In other words, they will come on as they are a part of the church, righteous and so forth, but they will actually be wolves out to deceive the flock. And you can see on your screen there a depiction of what that would look like in modern terms. Here we have a preacher, an apostate, maybe the one we're talking about who is teaching universalism, who, who appears to be righteous, but actually he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now we're going to look at another uh, picture on your screen. The apostasy in the end days uh, means that many will be left behind in in the final um, event called the rapture, the last event of the church on the earth in this age, when the church is caught up to heaven. 
uh, true believers will be left. And in this picture right here, you can see all of the false believers still left in the pews wondering where everybody else went. You can see the clothes of the individuals who uh, received Jesus as their Savior. They're gone. But the others are left. This is a result of the great apostasy. And now we want you to look at this chart on the screen which shows the seven churches uh, that represent the, uh, the seven church ages all through history since the time that Jesus went up to heaven for the last 2,000 years. The last church down at the bottom on your right hand uh, corner there is called the church of Laodicea. These churches are seen in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 and that last church is the church of apostasy. That's the age that we live in right now. Now Dr. Pack as we're talking about this we want to ask the question of what is the source of apostate doctrines. We've already learned in some of the previous sessions that it is ultimately it's demonic mm -hmm. And then it, uh, its source also is from the imaginations or the teachings or the doctrines of men. Now we're going to see that it also is, comes from myths. You know, a myth is a yarn or a fable that is spun out of one's own imagination. I want you to go uh, with me to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 6 and 7. It says, in pointing out these things to the brethren, that is, in pointing out the source of apostasy in the end days, you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ, constantly nourished on the words of the faith, on the Bible, and of sound doctrine, that's only found in the Bible, uh, which you have been following, but have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Now, if you look at the picture on your screen, here's a picture of uh, myths all through history. We've got a Roman god, we've got a Norse god, we've got an Egyptian god. These are myths, and that's essentially uh, what apostasy is, friends. And when you come to the apostasy that we talked about earlier, Dr. Pack, of universalism, uh -huh. that is a myth <laughs> spun out of the imagination of uh, one individual. It really is. And Phil, we talked about that church, you know, that uh, the seven churches there. The last church is called the Laodicean church, mm -hmm. and here's uh, uh, six things about that church. It was lukewarm, neither mm -hmm. cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm, I'm so sick of you, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And it, uh, it was rich, it was increased with goods, and it had Christ on the outside trying to get inside. Now that's the way it is. The Lord would like to get into some of these churches. He was actually standing out knocking on the knocking door. Knocking on the he? door and mm -hmm. trying to get in. And that there's many churches around the United States that are just like that, mm -hmm. around the world for that matter. Uh, for example, example, in England right now, only 7% of the people go to church. Think of that. Well, that's oh, amazing. It's amazing what, what's happening over mm -hmm. there. So anyhow, we're living at the end of the age. I believe that I believe that soon the Lord is coming, and I believe all of these apostates are going to spend eternity in hell with others. Uh, if we can get the picture on the screen here, I think you have a picture of some of these apostates, don't you? Yes. Here's the ungodly, mm -hmm. and uh, in there there's Hitler and Saddam Hussein and all of these, uh, these false priests and false preachers that we've been talking about. They're going to spend eternity in hell according to the Bible, Phil. It's, it's not what we think, it's what the Bible says. It's That's exactly right. And you know, Dr. <clears throat> Pack, if somebody wanted to read about that, I would just advise, friends, that you go and read the book of Jude. It's one chapter short, but it tells you about apostates, apostasy, and what's going to happen with these people if they don't repent. Let me read one verse out of that. In Jude 4, Phil, it says this. In Jude verse 4, it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, this is the kind of people that we've been talking about. These are apostates. They have departed from the faith, and we have so many of them today that are doing that. Exactly. Well, you know, one, one hallmark or one identifying factor of an apostate is that they deny the gospel. They deny the truth of the gospel. You know, the gospel tells us how to be saved, how to uh, be accepted by God, and how to be received by God into His fellowship. So that is fundamentally important for all of us in our lives. They deny that fact. Let me show you where that is done. Look here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. It says, And it was because of the false brethren who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty which we have in Jesus Christ. What do they mean by liberty that we have in Jesus Christ? That means that Jesus receives us freely, uh, simply uh, by us uh, receiving Him by faith. He receives us. He gives us salvation freely. So uh, they have uh, spy out our liberty that we have in Jesus Christ in order to bring us into bondage. But we did not yield in subjection to them for even an hour, so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. 
Phil, I'd mm -hmm. like to bring out now, we're talking about the gospel. Mm -hmm. A lot of people out there may not know what the gospel is, and it's very simple. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, and this is what he said. He said, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And in verse 1, he says, I declare unto you the gospel. Now, this is the good news that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again. And so if these men don't preach this and believe this, they're apostates. Well, you know, it's not difficult to understand, is it, Dr. No, it Pack? isn't. Very simple. It's simply a matter of belief and faith. That's it. Some people do not want to believe it. Well, you know, friends, there's another passage in Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 14, where it, it says, but when we saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. So it is extremely, it is uh, fundamentally important that we be straightforward about the truth of the gospel and uh, about our acceptance of Jesus into our lives. Stay with us more as we look at apostasy in the end days. Friends, how should we respond to apostasy? You may have apostasy in your own church. How should you respond when you see apostates preaching an unbiblical message? You know, the Bible, uh, we don't want to be unkind, we don't want to be intolerant. Uh, but the Bible tells us how we should respond in a number of different places. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. And before we read that verse, I want to mention this. You know, apostasy begins with a denial of basic doctrine or basic Bible teaching. And from there, it gravitates to uh, evil deeds. And we see on the screen right now a depiction of a, a cardinal in the world's largest uh, false church. And uh, he has participated in evil deeds. And of course, this is public knowledge and it is all over uh, the world. One of the big news stories going out. But we've learned that behind all apostates, there is demonic influence. Well, let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And it says this, And do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, and that would include all apostasy, but instead even expose them, even expose them. And Dr. Pack, that's not a uh, enjoyable task to do. That's one of the parts of Christian ministry that sometimes is very difficult to do, but it is commanded of us and it is required. Yes, and that next verse, Phil, it ought to be read also. In verse 12 there it says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you the things that have been exposed concerning that man and the church that he represents are absolutely unbelievable. They're the most unholy. I can't I wouldn't even want to repeat it on television, some of the stories that I've read in the newspapers. It's well, just sad. Really. It, it's, it's, it's apostasy is what it is. It is, it is public knowledge, yeah. and it is something that uh, is uh, one of the most blatant forms of apostasy. Of course, that is in a church that has been apostate since the 3rd century A.D. Now, let's go to Second Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 2, because we want to explain something to you. There is a passage in the Bible that talks about the apostasy, and I want to capitalize that <clears throat> article, the, because there is a specific instance in history when we will have something called the apostasy. And that happens during the reign of the Antichrist, during the Great Tribulation period. The apostasy that we see today in the church age is going to eventually uh, lead the church into a situation where we, are, we have a great mixture of wheat and tares, but the wheat, the saved individuals, will be raptured out. Then the unbelieving uh, church will continue right on into the Great Tribulation. New believers will be born again during the Great Tribulation. tribulation. But when the Antichrist goes in and sets himself up as the Bible says he will, into the rebuilt temple of God, into the Holy of Holies, and declares himself to be God. And then he says that everyone who does not accept him will die. Uh, or, and will not be able to buy and sell if they, if they live. Then there will be a great apostasy like one that the world has never seen before. This is called the apostasy. You can see a picture of it on your screen there. We have a picture of the false prophet who will assist the Antichrist, and we have a picture of the Antichrist in the middle of the Holy of Holies there, setting himself up and declaring himself to be God. The Bible says at that time there will be something called the apostasy. Let's read in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, let no one in any way deceive you, for it, talking about the day of the Lord and all of that period of the Great Tribulation, it will come, it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. 
And then Dr. Packett goes on to talk about the man of lawlessness and the Antichrist who will uh, mm -hmm. be here during that time. And Phil, as we think about the Antichrist, I want to remind our audience again that we have this book that has been reprinted, The Assyrian Connection, by Philip Goodman. And uh, you ought to have this book. It's just been reprinted, and it has all kinds of pictures and charts in it and everything. And this is about the Antichrist who's going to emerge from the old Babylonian or the Assyrian Empire. And this is where Saddam Hussein was, or maybe still is. And so anyhow, you, you need to get this book. It will really help you. You can have this book for only $15, postpaid, and you ought to order this book today. Phil, they need to get that. Absolutely. And you know, in our country, we're seeing a great apostasy. The Western world, especially America, has been the greatest witness on earth, Dr. Pack, through the past century in terms of a witness for the gospel. We send out more missionaries than all the other nations of the earth put together. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. But as yep. you're going to read in a little bit, some of us, uh, we have a great... Uh, um, onslaught of apostasy within yes, these churches, and it's affecting some of these missionary mi it really, movements. It really is. I want to uh, also uh, offer this book right here. We want to offer you this book called America the Beautiful by Dr. David Reagan of Lamb and Lion Ministries. This tells about America's future in prophecy, and it gives us both the good news and the bad news. The Bible has many implications. It never ma mentions the United States of America specifically, but it has many implications about America. This is a terrific book. You need to get a hold of this, and uh, you can uh, have this for your gift of $15 or more to our ministry. Okay, Phil, I think we ought to tell the people that what they need to do is get into a church now where they do what it says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. This is what Paul wrote to Timothy, that to keep things straight in the local church, preach the word, be diligent, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. So that's what the cheap, the preachers today need to do that they're not doing. I mean, a lot of them are just giving namby pamby, pussy footing, luke down, uh, watered down sermons. I mean, they don't mean anything. They don't get any results in their churches. Well, we need correction in the church. We need correction. You know, Jesus taught us to do that, and so yes. did the apostles. Now, Dr. Pack, you had something about missionaries in the Methodist Church. Yes, I wanted, we were talking about the I, great I wanted to read that, that is to you. going on. Uh, what is going on is unbelievable here. Let me just read this. Just a I know, well, friends, while Dr. Pack is looking that up, the Methodist denomination, like so many of mainline denominations, is greatly affected uh, in this day and age with uh, a movement of apostasy, and it is a sad situation that is, it is affecting their missionary movements, the uh, spreading of the gospel. It says the United Methodist Church did have at one time 2,700 full-time missionaries that served overseas. Today, they have only 282. Now, that shows what's happened when the apostates get in in the leadership of the church when they say that homosexuality is all right and all these other things are all right. See, this is what happens. This is why if you're going to any kind of a church, no matter what its name is, you need to, that does those things, you need to get out of there. You need to get saved if you're not saved and then get out of a church like And we that. want to make clear, friends, this is not all Methodist churches. No. Uh, there are many Methodist churches that lift up the Lord. Receive Him today. Thank you for joining us today for Prophecy Watch. Our goal at Prophecy Watch is to reveal the truth of Scripture as it pertains to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to watch for such a time as this. This program is faith-based, and we depend on viewers like you to continue this work. We covet your prayers and look forward to hearing from you soon. If you would like to help, you can write to Prophecy Watch, Post Office Box 4414, Tulsa, Oklahoma 74159. Or call us toll free at 1-888-835-6978. Or visit us on the World Wide Web at www.prophecywatch.com. Thank you again, and we look forward to being with you next time for Prophecy Watch.